Welcome everyone to this session on generating synthetic data. Um, if you're well known into this subject, please know it's an introductory session. So um, you might know the content of today already, but it's only 20 minutes. So you can also sit it out and see if you learn something new. I want to run you through why it's the best flight simulator, in my opinion, for uh, us data, data people, synthetic generation, data sen generation. We're going to discover it together. Um, I expect you to walk out of the room with uh, uh, just as excited as I am about synthetic data generation. Well, not right now, at the end of the session, please. Quick briefing about me. Um, if you're looking for a pilot on your data project, I can do that. Or you need an aircraft or entire airport inspect inspection, uh, reach out to me. A couple of ways to do that. So before we start, I just want to give you a heads up. Uh, we're going to talk data vault today. Sorry for that. But let's start. Imagine you're a pilot and you want to have some training. You want to develop yourself like us. How do you do that? You put your flight hours in, right? You fly, 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 fly. It's, uh, it's difficult, but even more difficult is how do you get different situations? You want to learn how to fly a storm, wind from the left, right, front, um, different aircrafts. So you can't just fly into the storm. It's risky. You might even die. I, I promise that's the only parallel the, the parallel stops there for us, right? Um, but the company, our company where we work, that might die if we don't do our jobs well, if we just use production data everywhere. It's a, it's a real risk. So what people do, pilots, they practice flight simulation. Um, I believe th they spend way many more hours in there during their training, but also during their life uh, they spend uh, a lot of time there. So what do, we do, what do we have? We have data. Imagine this fruit to be real fruit. Then how do we get more fruit, better fruit, different fruit? We make a toy version of it. And that's what synthetic data is all about. It mimics the characteristics of the real fruit, but we can shape it. We can multiply it. We can make it larger, a bigger apple, no problem. Get a real big apple, that's difficult, right? Hell, if we want a million bananas, we can have it in a couple of seconds if we just generate that. So that can work very, very well, but um, what about just using real data? There's no substitution for that, I hear a lot. But there are a, a couple of different um, difficult things about that. How do you ensure that all of your sensitive data is anonymized? And taking one step back to just acknowledge the fact that having production data on your development machines, test environments, is a bad thing. I think we can all agree on that, but it's still a, a common reality that we just do that. And then a lot of companies have taken the step, it's a good, smart step, to anonymize that data. But there are a couple of difficult, difficult things about that. Um, how do you ensure all of the sensitive data is anonymized? How do you ensure that it's impossible to revert this anon anonymization? Um, because that's, of course, then it defeats the purpose. If, it, if the anonymized data gets into the wrong hands, they can reverse that action just by adding some other data, relating data, then, yeah, why do we do that? And also, don't forget, how do you get more data? Data for today, next week. If it's based on production data, the data might not be there, might not be there, and you can't anonymize data that's not there. And also, how to make new data, data for a new product that you don't have yet, a new country. So, oh, and one other thing, how to make less data. Production data might be a billion records. You can just take a top thousand or 
a random sample from that, but that might not really uh, mimic the characteristics of the production data anymore. So it, I have had uh, lots of discussions with people about just take production data, you can do with it. For a lot of things you can, yes. But when you have analytics, and even more seriously, for machine learning projects, it's really important to have the same characteristics as production. If you just cut away half of the data, and your distributions are wrong, your model will train on... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to say something about the data. Uh, uh, wrong data. Um, so how does this work? Usually you take production data, you put some knowledge uh, of yourself in there a little bit, uh, about which columns need to be anonymized, and then um, the engine does its work. It's a bit of a stupid engine, and then you get the anonymous data. It's the same volume and shape as the production data. Another approach that people do, and it's not, it's not a bad approach, but it ha also has its downsides, is generating fake data, real dummy data, by using something like the Faker library. It's, it's a really powerful library, uh, in Python, and it has versions and, and layers on top of it that you can also use. But the downside of this, it's, it requires a lot of manual work. You have to spend weeks to, to, to tune it right, to, to verify if everything is in there, and then, and then some more time. Um, it requires also a lot of knowledge about what should be in the data. For some analytics reports, you might quickly get it done if you have the graph with your 10 bars and it looks okay. But for machine learning, the data needs, like I said, uh, uh, to be a lot better. Um, so how do you get that? And it takes a really long uh, time, also in lead time, to just iterate that process to get close to production data. So in this, in this uh, diagram, you see the fake data object is, is skewed, right? It's not similar to the production data. And especially what is hard about this is to get the distributions, the, um, the refer referential integrity to be correct. There are ways, but it's really difficult. Um, so what if there was a way to combine these two worlds, right? That is what we're talking about in synthetic data generation. You take your production data, you take your knowledge about the data, you combine them in an engine that's a little bit smarter than the previous more stupid engines, hence the, the little gears here, and then you, you end up with synthetic data that mimics your production data quite well. All right. If we put those side by side, we can see a little bit of the comparison uh, about the definition, the purpose, and the characteristics of this um, yeah, these three flavors, and I think the, the, um, the main thing I want to mention here is that the anonymized data has a risk in it. There's always a, a, a residual risk, and, and some companies really don't like that. They, they, they're not happy with that, so we need to do better. And um, also worth mentioning is that the fake approach might really work well for some software testing, some development of, of niche features. So don't, don't, don't put it all uh, aside. It might be the best approach for that. And then synthetic data generation is, is, in my opinion, a really good balance between both of them. It overcomes the limitation of fake data while still having the characteristics of the production data. All right. So. This summarizes a bit the need for synthetic data generation. We have still um, a fix for the privacy and security concerns. The data is, 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 is still fake. Um, you cannot relate back to your real events, your real data, your real customers, if you do it properly. I, I think there are still ways where this can happen. So please verify, verify, verify. But it's, um, uh, by nature, this, this happens less often. And it bridges really well the gap in the underrepresented areas that you might have in your data. You can also just tweak it a little bit, saying, hey, 
I have this this country and I only have one sales. And in your data, you you want to have it, you want to have more, you tweak it a bit more, and then boom, you you have yeah a lot of um, a lot of clients suddenly there, and that's a, that's a nice thing. Then the the last thing I don't know maybe you can raise your hand if you if you work in machine learning uh, development. I don't expect a lot of people there. Some, yeah, great. That's what I expected. But please know that in this this area of, of our of our field, it's really, really, really important that all of the distributions in the data are correct. That's why they usually say, "I want all of the data. I want production data. Don't give me anything else." And they're they're right. They they can they can say that, but. What we end up usually is that the the lab of the data scientists end up ends up like this. All of the company data flows in there. Usually, a lot of people don't even know what's there. They have their back back doors, their ways of, of grabbing the data. And once they have one finger, they take them all, and they want it daily, weekly. They want huge piles of data. And um, I, I I understand that. It's it's the, the only way for them to do, to do their job good uh, until now, because uh, we now have synthetic data generation. Um, but imagine that this, 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 this well of data, these people, they're, they're geniuses, but they also sometimes are a bit sloppy, or I don't know how to say that, but they Careless, but they, they do care, but they are not as strict as we are in software engineering. You know, they have they have some steps to take there. So they copy data to their laptop, bring it on the train, whatever. It's not uncommon there. So it's a huge risk to have all of this production data, the entire company and external data, in a way that that, that a lot of people can access it and ex and export it and do whatever they need, they think they need to do with it. So it's a risk. We need to we need to enable them, but with boundaries. All right. So I envision that all of this, all of this data that we see in the future will be replaced with synthetic data. All right. Especially for machine learning, data science practices. OK. Some applications and benefits of a synthetic data generation. You might think about your own situation. And you, you already might think, hey, I can apply it to here, here, here. But let's take a look at some examples. We have, uh, as I mentioned, software engineering, where it can be really um, interesting to have all of this data at hand. And to be able to have data, lots of data, good quality, for something that does, does not happen in reality yet, because it's a new product, a new feature, New part of your website or app that you're uh, extending, so that's uh, that's really valuable. And as I said, to accelerate the machine learning AI development, it's it's really cru crucial. And don't underestimate uh, the data privacy regulatory reasons that organizations might have. Um, if you're working in the financial sector, banking, um, insurance, it's it's highly regulated and they don't take no for an answer regarding this and the access of data um, and, and how you treat your. All right, speed it up a bit. We have lots of algorithms and techniques that uh, are being used underwater, under the hoods. Um, I'll share the slides on, on uh, Session Eyes and on the website, but um, these are like five major types of classes that, that are being used. I don't know the details of all of them. You should, you should neither. It's not necessary to, to know that. Um, but there are some interesting um, differences between them. So sometimes when you want to increase your quality of your generated data, switch to another one, and then you can get those, those percentages higher. All right, and then a couple of uh, tools and platforms that are out there. Um, just this, just, just, just. Uh, um, how do you say that? A grape, whatever. Uh, mostly AI is pretty known. Synthesized, Hazy, Gretel. Um, 
And there, I probably forgot about some, some major leader, leading developers here as well. But for me, this, this looked a bit like all of these startups and AI vendors, founders, they, they want a piece of the pie. Understandably, it's, um, the market is really transforming. So if you're jumping on the wagon and uh, you're going to use data, uh, syn synthetic data generation, don't uh, do a vendor lock-in where you put all of your money on one, one company. Uh, it might be best to just be flexible here because things will change rapidly. All right, then I have um, two demos. First one is mostly AI. Uh, mostly AI is a, is a vendor that have a portal, you log in, log in, you have a couple of free credits, but also you, you can pay your money and then you, you can do uh, a lot of more. So it's, it's really not a free uh, setup. And what you do here is you create generators, and I already uh, created, created one. A generator is your, your model. It has learned your production data, and then it knows that. That's the generator. You can then use the generator to generate synthetic data sets. And for instance, here I have a Netflix demo. The overall accuracy is presented 91 point, wait. Now you see it. 91.4 accuracy. So you can really dive into the details of the generated data set and compare it to the real one and see if it um, is good enough in your opinion. Here you can see it's a bit uh, vague, but I, I guess that's because the quality is so good. Um, there's only some minor differences between the synthetic and the original data set. And you can really dive into all of the details per column. What was the comparison between uh, left and right? I think mostly AI is a good platform, but I really want to have control over everything. So I want to do it in my own environment, which is locked down. I can't get data in or out, right? I only have some Python packages available that are um, vetted, that are checked. And mostly AI is checked, so I can use that. Um, so you also have the uh, capability of doing the same things as in the portal, in the UI, in Python code, yay. Everything you do here is connected to your API key, so it will be reflected in the UI as well. I think that's a nice setup, so you have best of both worlds. If a colleague wants to do something in the UI, they can. Your work that you just executed in Python will be reflected there. But as I said, that requires an online connection. The second demo that I really want to uh, show you is this an open source framework called Synthetic Data Vault. I honestly don't know yet why the Data Vault name was chosen, why, where it comes from, but um, it's uh, uh, just ignore that. It's is S uh, SDV from now on. And it has great documentation, GitHub, everything is out there. Um, and the, the good thing is that this is free and open source. They have a company next to it. I think that's a good combination, so they have money and funds to drive it further and to give you support if you need that. If you want to pay for support, you can. Uh, but if you don't want to pay anything, it's good. And it, it's, it's, it's really powerful. And this has been around for years. And unfortunately, we've run out of time. But I, just, I think I'll just use a minute more to uh, run through this example. And uh, let's see, uh, we import the SDV package, we download demo data, let's forget about that. And then here we have the fit statement, and this runs in under one second, and this um, looks at the real data that you have given it, and then it generates this model, and then here you say, give me a sample. And that's the command to generate your new data out of the model. And number of rows is 500. You can give it 500 million if you want. It will spit it out. And as you see here, the guest email, example.net, example.org. So your personal identifiable information is, is covered. And this library also has a lot of inbuilt built-in capabilities of comparing the real versus the synthetic data. Um, here you have an example of, of real is, is gray. Synthetic is green, 
it doesn't look really similar enough. So what you can do is you can customize it. Use some of the parameters to tweak it. Select, select one of the other algorithms. And here I've done that for the room rate. I used another algorithm. I don't know about this. It's just a demo. But sometimes if you just <laughs> trial and error, and whatever gets your best quality in percentages, you go with that, right? And then you can verify afterwards. And now look at this. It, I'm happy with this. It's good enough. If you want to uh, use this data, then um, all you need to do, let me show you. This is the, uh, the data frame. Uh, and you can use this just like any normal Python data frame that you're already used to. So it's, it's, it's really easy. And again, this is offline, free. So if you want to start play around, maybe first look at this synthetic data fault offering. All right, time flew by. Um, let's, I don't officially have time for questions anymore, so I want to thank you. I'll be here, so if you really want to ask me something, just uh, come over and um, we'll handle them. Thank you very much.